So today I need to water and clean some of my plants and I thought it'd be fun to bring you guys along and show you what I've learned so far. Sorry for the extreme blue stripes right here, but I'm in the middle of renovating our living room and that's actually a really fun project that I'm gonna post about later. So I'm gonna try to show you all my plants without giving away too much of the living room because I want it to be a big reveal. But this blue tape is up here because I'm putting, doing like a temporary method for the wallpaper, so. Anyways, just ignore that. Today, I am just going to be watering some of my plants and cleaning them, taking care of them. And usually in the past, I've killed so, so many plants that I actually gave up on live plants for a while and I got all fake plants because I've just killed so many plants in my life. Thankfully, Home Depot has a really good return policy, so I've literally brought plants back to Home Depot that are completely dead because I killed them and like got my money back <laughs> but anyways um i have one two three four five i have five live plants in the house right now and all of them are still alive so i feel like i finally am starting to figure out how to take care of plants i've learned a lot of tips and tricks over the last month or two because i've been doing so much research because i really wanted to keep them alive this time and today i'm going to water a couple of them so i thought it'd be a good time to film myself and Kind of show you what i've learned um not all of the plants are ready for water and which i'll talk about more later how i actually don't have them on really a schedule like i thought i would um but i'll explain how i know when to water them and all of that stuff so i'll show you all the different plants i have and i'll just bring you through sort of like a plant care day for me okay so these two are my pothos plants this one is still looking pretty perky but it has drooped a little bit from its most perky situation and that is how i know that it's almost ready for water also you can feel that the soil is really dry and when i watered it last time it was soaking wet like a lot of water and now it's dry even if i stick my finger in there a little bit it is pretty dry one little trick that i learned is it helps to get two of the same plant because then you can compare and contrast so like um because i had these two if i water them slightly differently i can see which one responds better and do like little experiments so honestly that's how i learned how to do a lot of this is just by trying different things on these two plants and seeing which one worked better so you can see that this plant is looking a little bit droopier than that one and that's because it needs water this is damage from um one time that i let them go way too long without water so you can see on both of the plants basically three leaves ago this one only two leaves ago this was these two leaves came out at the same time and i didn't give them enough water and up here too but they recovered really well from that it's always better to underwater than to overwater because you can easily recover from being too dry but it's hard to recover if they get too wet um let's see i have so many things to say um okay so for these two especially i found that the best strategy is to bottom water and i learned that from my friend nicole who has one of these that's super super long and i will show you how i do that these are the fastest growing plants they grow probably one extra leaf like every week i would say when they're doing well when they get dry they start to slow down and obviously when they're too wet they definitely slow down and when they're too wet they would turn they turn yellow so okay so that's those plants these are really easy to take care of so this is my rubber tree and you can see that it's starting to droop so when this one is doing really well the leaves stand almost straight up they're like really really perky like this leaf would be more like that this plant has air roots like this which means that the roots are going to come out because they use oxygen not just water um so that's kind of cool you can also see how the leaves look kind of dusty oh that looks really bad actually <laughs> And some of that is dust, so I'm going to show you how I clean it off, but this plant also gets like a sap that comes through the leaves and it looks kind of like dust, like it makes these little white spots. So I'll show you how I clean that off after I water them. Okay, so this is Colin the cactus. I forgot to tell you all my plants' names, but this one is named Colin. And this is the plant that I've had the longest. I got it about three years ago, right after I moved into this house, and it was, it was like this tall. 
and it's grown since then so i'm really excited about that i pretty much i mean it's a cactus so i pretty much do nothing except water every once in a while when the soil starts to get really tight and the reason that it is so skinny up here is because it wasn't getting enough water and it's actually recovering pretty well because they were even skinnier and then once i moved it over to the window you can see how it bulged up and then it's starting to kind of fill in down there i think so i don't know that much about cac cacti but they're pretty easy to take care of so this has been growing taller ever since I got it more light and more water and this is Phoebe the fiddly fig tree this is a super popular plant I'm sure you've seen them before they're very you know California trendy right now and this one is supposed to be really hard to keep alive but surprisingly it's been doing really well I haven't had any problems with it yet the only thing is that it hasn't grown it has just like stayed the same and I'm not sure if that's because it's not growing season or if I need to be giving it more food but um, it, at least it's still looking really pretty it has these huge big green leaves I'm actually don't think I'm gonna water it today it's almost time for water but this week has been really cloudy and so it hasn't gotten as much light and um, I just stuck my finger in the soil and it's really dry on top but once I went in probably half an inch it was still pretty wet so I'm gonna give it a little more time because this kind of tree you really don't want to overwater because they can then they can get root rot and they are very sensitive to that so I'm gonna give this one a little bit more time until the soil gets a little bit more dry and um, I'm probably gonna watch again for drooping leaves so like this one for example is really perky right now and all of them really are kind of perky so if I start to see this one droop a little bit more that's when I'm gonna be like okay time to water so yep and then this one I also need to dust off and clean the most important thing that I've heard about the about the fiddly fig tree is they really don't like to be moved so I just leave it in this corner and then I take it outside every time I want to water it which is usually around every two weeks um, but it depends on what the weather has been like so I'm gonna start with this one because this is the one that I know for sure needs water and I'm gonna use the bottom watering technique which is pretty cool um, it's a way to kind of make sure that you give it the right amount of water and they'll be really happy afterwards so take a mental screenshot or a real screenshot of what this looks like now so that you can compare after it's had water for bottom watering what you do is you just fill up a little bucket or a little bowl with some water and the plant actually might want to drink more than this but I'm just gonna start with this I'm just gonna stick the plant in here and then it's gonna drink up from the bottom however much water it wants through the roots and then that's a really good way to make sure that it gets water throughout the whole plant because it's coming through the roots instead of just dripping down from the top and usually it will stop drinking for the most part when it doesn't want anymore it'll get too it'll get too much water if you leave it in there forever but um, you can tell when the water stops going down that the plant is done drinking. So the plant is just chilling in the water. I'm gonna watch for two things. You wanna watch for when the water goes all the way down and you also wanna watch for when the top of the soil starts to get wet. So when I see the top of the soil start to get wet, that's how I know that it's good and it's had enough. And if you leave it in there a little bit too long, it's honestly probably fine. Okay, so you can see how it's been about five or 10 minutes and the water level on this one is really low. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more and because the top of the soil is not wet yet, it's still looking dry. Okay, this one is looking good. Look at that wet soil all over. So now I'm going to take this out and let it dry just for a sec on some paper towels. And then within a few hours this will perk up. So I'm going to do the same exact thing with this rubber tree. Oh, there's a new sprout here. Okay, this little sprout right here, that's the first sprout I've seen on this plant. So I'm really excited about that. It's growing. If your plant is sprouting new little sprouts, then you know it's doing well. I'm going to give it... A little bit of time in here I'm 
So this one last time it probably only took about 15 minutes before the top of the soil was wet and so I took it out right after that. I have not tried bottom watering on this plant yet but I've heard that you can do it on most plants. So for this one you could just put it in your bathtub or something. So far I've only done normal top watering for this one but I'm just realizing you have to give it a lot more water than you think just not as often as you think. So less often but more water. So I leave the hose in there for I'm um, not on like super blast, but I put the hose on maybe halfway and I usually leave it in there for like 20 seconds or something. So, I mean, that's a long time. So this gets very wet and then I leave it outside to drain until any excess water is gone and then I bring it back in. So I've just kind of learned from experimenting that they need more water than I thought um, and the bottom watering is a good way to figure out about how much water they want. So like my rubber tree, it started drooping and so I read that that meant that it needed more water and I gave it more water but nothing changed. It was just still droopy and I realized that it's because I didn't give it enough water even though I, it, the frequency was fine. It just wasn't getting enough every time I watered it. So I, I still waited because I didn't want to rot the roots or anything and I waited like another week and then I watered it again and that time I gave it more water and after that it looked amazing. Another thing I've learned is it does, I mean this is kind of obvious but I guess I just never thought about it too much. It really does depend on how much light they get and so you can google search things, you can find out how often you're supposed to water them but you really have to just you have to get to know them because it depends on how much light you have. That's why I think it's kind of cool to get two of the same one and experiment because you're getting to know the plant in your conditions because the plant might want something else in somebody else's house with their lighting situation and their draft situation. There's just too many factors to be like, oh, all rubber trees want water every two weeks, two cups at a time, you know, like it totally depends. And um, as weird as this might sound like, they are living creatures they are like they are alive so it kind of makes sense that they would be like all other living creatures which is it it depends on a lot of things and you have to love them <laughs> like when i think about the plants that i've killed most of them i had them during like stressful times of life so i wasn't paying a ton of attention to them i was just like i just wanted them <laughs> but and i was like please stay alive but i didn't know what i was doing but with these plants i spend a lot of time checking on them and cleaning them and researching them and as soon as I see something that doesn't seem quite right I look it up right away instead of like waiting until it's a big problem so it's just a matter of paying attention to them and you know really getting to know your plant. I just want to add that when I would watch plant videos like trying to learn how to do this stuff and they would look at a plant like this and be like oh it's drooping it needs water I would be like what how do you know that it's drooping like it doesn't look that droopy and i want to say that the reason that i know that this is drooping is because i've been paying attention to it throughout the week and it doesn't look bad but i know that it's droopier than it was for the last two weeks and that's how i can tell that it's drooping so it's all about paying attention to it throughout the week instead of just like ignoring them and then being like how do I know if it needs water and if I waited longer it would become more obvious but then it would also become you know kind of damaged like this okay so for the cleaning I just take a rag like this and I've only I'm really new to this part so I don't have a lot of tips but I do know or I've learned that the best thing is to start at the top leaf and just kind of dust them off from the middle and then once you've dusted the whole thing, you can actually coat them in a mixture of water and dish soap and that will help keep the pests away. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm just going to dust them down. Okay, so this is my fully dusted rubber plant and I wanted to add that the reason you need to dust it is not just so that it looks better, but it's also because if, if a leaf is covered in dust, it's not going to absorb as much sunlight. So you want to dust them off. I just do it every time I water them, but you could do it once a week, once a month. Um, probably the more often you do it, the better. Um, 
and then that will keep them absorbing sunlight. So another way to tell if your plant is overwatered or underwatered is the um, the pot will be heavier if it has a lot of water in it. And so you can t you can tell the difference when you lift it. So like right now it's just been watered so it's really heavy. And if it still feels sort of heavy a week from now, I'll know that there's still plenty of water down here. And if it feels really light, then that means probably that the soil is super dry. This will probably still be kind of heavy from water for the next week or so. And then after that, I'll just kind of feel it out and see when it needs to be watered. Okay, so this is the next thing that I do for these two plants that I have with the big leaves and it is like a cleaning solution and that will keep the bugs away. This is just a mixture of tap water and a little bit of dish soap. So I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did with the dusting, but I'm gonna get the cloth wet with this. Okay, the last thing I do for my plants before I'm done with the day is I take a little bit of peppermint oil and I will, sometimes I'll just kind of like dab it around the pot at the bottom, um, but this time I think I'm gonna try to dilute it first. So I'm gonna just put a few drops of peppermint oil into this little bit of water and then I'm gonna use the cloth again and just drag it around like wipe down the outsides of the pots. So I don't want the peppermint oil to get in to the, tr to the plant. So I'm not putting peppermint oil in the soil. I'm just putting it around the outside because um, most insects and bugs just hate the smell of peppermint. And so this is another thing that I do to keep the pests away. It smells really strong. I only put in like four or five drops into all that water but you can really smell it, which is a good thing. So I'm gonna do this on all the plants. Okay, so it's the next day and the plants are looking really good. They definitely perked up a little bit. They're not as droopy, but, but you can see how they're dripping water from the ends. So this is not because they got wet on top. This is because they're pulling water from the roots and trying to let it go through the leaves, which means that they probably have a little bit too much water and this is normal, it means the plant is healthy if it's doing that, but I really don't want them to get overwatered. so just in case, I'm putting them back on some paper towels for a little bit, and the paper towels will help soak out some of the water from the bottom. So we are leaving to go on a road trip in a couple hours, so I'm just gonna leave them on there until then, and hopefully that'll be enough time. Hi guys, so I'm currently editing this video that you're watching right now about plants, and I realized I totally forgot to film some kind of outro like thanks for watching. It was just gonna end awkwardly with like my plants are dripping. Bye! <laughs> Thought I would just hop on here again just to say thanks so much for watching and if you have any questions about plants I'm not an expert but I would love to try to help you so you can leave them in the comments if you have any tips for me. I just got two new plants this week and they're really cute and I'm so excited about them. So once I learn how to take care of those, I'll probably make another plant video. I don't know. As just the more I learn, I'm going to make more videos. So let me know if there's any other plant things you want to learn. Yeah, thanks for watching. As usual, if you can subscribe to my channel and like this video, it really helps me out. And I'll see you next time.